Circuit bending is engineering. Artistic practice, I guess. It's a craft, it's a hobby. Re-engineering, I guess. It's interdisciplinary. It's definitely not a science. <laughs> Just everything about it, man. The way you do it and the aesthetic, how these things look like. And you find a way to manipulate the current state of the circuit board so that you can create a new sound. It's doing something it's not intended to do. Doing the building, you could really find potentially sounds that no one's heard before. And now the music has so much more capabilities. No one wants this crap, but it's like not crap. It's actually pretty good. You just gotta figure out how to work with it. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Bend It Live, a podcast about circuit bending, where you will join me in real time as I work on various projects. Oh, yeah. I'm your host, David Caballo, also known as Baby Ginseng, and I am accompanied by digital artist and technical wizard Paul Girrett. That's me. So. And it's happening. Tell them what's up. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So my first, current and first project is the fart machine. The fart machine is a book strip that I have taken out of a read-along book. Um, it makes little insects noise, eh, insect noises. And I have added a few things and made some mods. And to make room for this stuff, I put it in and, you know, included it, well, expanded it into another enclosure. So first thing I did was change from watch batteries to double A's, which are a lot more manageable and they'll last longer. They're easier to find and um, it won't be so expensive to keep up. And then I also have my... voltage, just a different capacity, right? Yeah. So uh, I have my bend, which is two brown wires, one of which fell off. So first of all, I have to basically reattach that. Um, I don't know where that other brown wire went. <laughs> That's not good. So... It's probably in the the chest somewhere. I'm probably, I have other brown wires, it's okay. You know, I just have to do a better job. And you wanted it to be brown to pay homage to the uh, flatulence aspect of this whole thing? Yep. It just sort of makes sense. I just, I just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, I did not, I forgot to include that in the recap. I think that's important and I should touch on that as much as possible. I mean, it's true. When you have a rainbow of wires, we kind of talked about this in the last episode. You know, it helps to uh, color code things to keep everything manageable. And so you have the standard black for ground and, you know, red for power or positive. And, uh, you know, when. Uh, Doing other things like, for example, these two wires are the signal to the speaker. Um, I actually chose to make uh, the white one ground and the purple one hot, which means hot means it carries the signal, just to differentiate. And the same thing for this audio. Looks like I've chosen black as ground and I just mixed up the colors um, so I can be able to tell which one's which. And last time I uh, made a giant wire <laughs> with, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, four. I made one long wire out of five pieces. So really today I'm just gonna finish up this circuit that I was installing last time. <coughs> which is a volume control circuit. Um, it does so by way of what is called a voltage divider. So the signal has some voltage and 
how much it is you know being divided by um, by the resistor is um, chosen by the knob which inside this potentiometer there's a little strip resistor and sort of a uh, like a dial that contacts it and as you rotate you're selecting basically you know the smaller resistance out of two pieces so that's how that works and I'm going to finish installing that and repair my bend and then the bend works uh, by attaching a capacitor between the two leads so before I wire everything up um, I will maybe just leave that open and see if I can think of any other interesting mods uh, before I just completely wire it up. Oh and I forgot to add part of the co uh, volume control circuit is this switching jack so when you know something's plugged in um, and the great thing about this is I can now use the sound. What's that? Oh, yeah, just looking at my finger. <laughs> yeah, so this, the tip over here is, oh, whoops, wrong side. This is the sleeve, which is the ground. The tip is the signal, this green wire. Black is ground. And then yellow here is a switch. That goes over to, well, I haven't connected it yet. <laughs> but uh, this is going to go to the speaker. And so when nothing is plugged in, this switch going to the speaker is engaged. So I can still play things out of the speaker. But when I plug in headphones or, you know, other type of amplification then the switch will open and I won't have anything playing out of the speaker at the same time which is just kind of annoying. So I'm gonna wire everything up and um, set it all up and then maybe work on the bend a little bit and if I have more time then I may just start a second project. Um, one other thing I want. <laughs> the only reason I want to do that is um, I actually thought of something I want to add to at least this project and maybe a lot of others. And, um, you know, more on that later. So, first thing I got to do is find that other brown wire. I'm just going to look through my chest here. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I've got my soldering iron set to three and a half out of five. I need to review here uh, which terminal I'm going to solder to. I have my diagram here. Should this be flatter? Is that better? Hmm. Kind of. Wish it wasn't like. Wish it was flat. Flat. <laughs> yeah. Flat. Playing with new toys. Is that better? Kind of. So that's my circuit diagram. Is this? Yeah, that's not better, right? It's too big now. Now I can't fit other stuff on screen. Yes. Keep it further away now. What I wanted to do is kind of show these side by side. There you go. Well, it kind of works, right? So I'm just, what's that? Looking good, man. All right, good. 
Thank you. So what I am trying to do is decode this little diagram that I made. So I am connecting R2 over here. Let me get a little pointer. Point with this wire. <laughs> R2 over here is it's written next to my black blob. Um, you can see the lead to the brown wire coming out. So that's part of my bend. And the other terminal would be R3, which is over here. That's the one that came off. So you had two bends written down here. There's another one going to R1. Just make sure it's not that one. Oh, that's R1. R1 to R2. Oh, crap. No, wet fart. See, I, had to, I labeled the bends. I'm just, my notes are just so messy, I just don't know what I'm talking about. So there were two bends here. One of them is hold that fart. So maybe I'll solder that lead later. I guess, I remember hold that fart. Hold that fart was sort of, it wasn't that farty. But then again, I've never heard it amplified. But it was sort of like a weak little fart sound that was held for a really long time. Hold that fart. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember you saying that before. And then wet fart. Um, I thought was way more interesting because you got these crazy wet fart sounds for all different four buttons. So I ended up soldering the wet fart. So actually what I'm pointing to here, and you can't see, but underneath, underneath that lead that I've soldered, there's an R1. <laughs> and then up here, you can kind of see where the lead fell off. Boy, it's going to be hard to solder to that thing. Um, that's R2. So I wanted to connect R2 to R1. That's wet fart. And then after I connect that and wire up the rest of the circuit and all that, then I may revisit hold that fart. And, you know, what if they do something together? Um, part of soldering these leads right now is just to have to, to not have to do as many things when I'm engaging the bend. So, you know, I kind of have to play something and hold the leads together. And so um, it's pretty hard to, you know, touch your probe to the terminals while playing something. So if you know you're going to want to have the bend, then it's good to just solder it so you can just sort of alligator clip it and not have to mess with your probes. So I think I'll get right to that. Just don't know what I'm going to be able to do differently this time though. So I thought that was a pretty good job. When you look at this wire, there's just a tiny bit of solder on it. I didn't want to use too much because I didn't want to create a cold joint. Um, when, you, when you just have a huge blob of solder that basically it's, it's like a heat sink and it decreases the, you know, the, the conductivity of everything. You just sort of lose all your energy there. I guess I'm just going to sort of try to use the blob that's already on there and heat it up and try to melt it back on. That just sounds so crazy, but well, here we are. Um, it's kind of awkward. I'll just loop this around. Might move table cam to the right side in the future. Maybe easier over there? Yeah. It's okay right now, though. I mean, I'm, I am left handed.
Okay, there we go. Just a real quick job there. Just have to hope that baby holds. I like it when it's fast like that. That's how you want it to be. Okay, so that's ready. The thing is, I think it fell off too because I've been sort of tugging at it um, because I've had to connect it to do all this stuff. When I'm done with it, it's not going to move around too much, you know. Yeah, well, it'll be kind of floating outside in this big case, but I think that's still better. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to revisit the diagram for the volume control and jack and verify what needs to be done to complete it because I don't remember where this blue wire I made was supposed to go. Okay, so already I'm pretty sure it's going on the jack because here I have two connections on one of the lugs on the ground and uh, I only have one on the jack so I'm pretty sure that's one of them okay, yeah so just verifying here the tip So this switch is going to the positive speaker right there. Ground negative. Okay, I already have a ground going to the pot. So I just need a ground going from the ground of the jack to the negative speaker. Okay. And then I'll just wire up the speaker connections. One thing I've been thinking of um, was to actually mount another bigger speaker in the case. Because uh, this speaker is just so tiny, it sucks. You just It's just useless. You might as well not have it. So you can't hear anything. But I think I'll ponder that later. That's not a huge priority for me. I plan to mostly just be using the jack. So I'll worry about that later. So now it's time for everybody's favorite. What is everybody's favorite? <laughs> Stripping wires, wires and soldering them. <laughs> I guess it's, you know, right. there's not tinning, so it's not really everybody's favorite. It was a false alarm, everybody. Yeah, I like tinning more than anything else. <laughs> I know you do. Paul, how's your bending been recently? Uh, I've been busy and I haven't had the chance to put anything on the workbench, unfortunately. Oh. And fortunately. <laughs> Why fortunately? Oh, well, it's, well, it's, it's good to work, right? Things are good financially, but yeah. not good mentally, you know. I feel that, man. I recently uh, put in my two weeks. Oh, what? Yeah, made a little move up. So you got the job then? Or are you I got that job. job? No. That's a terrible idea. I got, no. I haven't done that yet. So, but, uh, so yeah. You don't have a job? Is that what you're doing? No, I signed the offer. What? It's about 25% uh, more. Congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. Can you go and get that Subaru? <laughs> that is one of the reasons. Yeah, get that Subaru. Yeah, the Subaru. Rally car. Yeah, man. <laughs> Just return to rally. I'll be down, man. I already rode in one of those in Arizona. Did you guys rally like I did in that Scion? Dude, we went hard. 
<laughs> this is <laughs> fucking tight. So this was um, up in the forest, kind of like where we went. We went to a forest area, as I recall. And um, cactus forest. <laughs> no, this this was like you know big conifers and stuff. And it got pretty. It was pretty cold up there, even though it was like the summer. So I mean, it's all hot, but then you're in the canyon, and first of all, you're you're in the forest, and you're high up in elevation, and then because it's a shady canyon, like I, I was going to check out these little pools in this creek, and it's it's like 40 degree water, man. Thanks. Is it 40 degrees like freezing? 32. 32 is freezing. So it was almost freezing water. <laughs> it was pretty cold water. But anyway, so this place, like, it's up in the mountains, and, you know, it's the way to get there. You got to go on these, like, forestry service roads and stuff that aren't on the, you know, the, the Google Maps and stuff. And so. Those are, I, those are definitely the fun ones. Dude, I freaking messed this up already. I wasn't supposed to tin these yet. <laughs> I was supposed to wrap them around first. Just got lost thinking about Subarus. That's what happens, man. Yeah. Well, it's around. been a long time in the making. Subaru and all that money you're making. And all that money. This is like four years ago, maybe. But uh, I'm up here in this place, and like I can't. I don't know where I'm going, and. I thought I did, and it's like, I'm at this gate, and I'm like, oh, that can't be right, you know? So I'm just going off some other way, and it's just like, not even a real trail or whatever. And and then I found, you know, I'm like not the only one. So then this like couple comes along, and then they, they got a Subaru Forester. And they're just like, man, I, can you find the trail? Like, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, and, and like, basically, like, I just keep on going, and then I park my car, and then I'm just walking, and, like, that's when these people roll up, and they're just like, hey, you know, you want to you wanna ride to the trailhead? We're going to try to figure it out, and then I'm like, well, I mean, all right, you know, like, take my chances. Hopefully, this isn't the kind of couple that kills you, you know, but... <laughs> I accepted a ride, man, my mom watches this podcast, oh. <laughs> but I accepted a ride from a random couple in the, up on the mountain <laughs> in Arizona, and yeah, they were like, we totally were totally off, off track, I guess like, it, you were supposed to like open the gate and close it behind you, you know, but they don't. You can't find that info on like Google Maps no, or whatever. Of course not. So that was my. F after afterwards, you know, when I came, you know, across like a forestry service road where there was a gate, I knew, <laughs> I knew after that time. But yeah, so I'm rolling with this couple, and like we're just basically like the things just going on like these piles of wood chips. It, it, the thing was going hard. And then that was the first like time that I was like, oh shit. Because it was like in the forest, you know, like we weren't, we were off trail. Like we were not on, we thought it was like the road, but it was just like, like game trails or something, you know. It was just like faint trails through like piles of like wood chips, like fallen, fallen wood chips. <laughs> no, nah, but like, like, yeah, probably as fast as you were going, but it was pure wood chips. <laughs> I think I was going like 40, but it felt yeah, like 80. Exactly. Same deal. The shit, but you know, it wasn't, the shit was not like upright. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was like a kid like playing with the car, like, <laughs> shit. Like, it was great. 
Sounds like I got to go back there when I get it. So, is that <laughs> like the inspiration it. for why you wanted to get one of these things? That's when it started. And then, like, also it's just seeing, like, um, the damage that I've done to my poor Versa. This yeah, thing, thing drives horribly now. thing has seen better days, for sure. It drives terribly. <laughs> that poor thing. You've had that thing for a while now, though. Yeah. Like, um, seven or eight years, I think. Yeah, how many times have you crashed it? Uh, <laughs> I ran over a curb, like, maybe twice. And, uh, that's, that's about it, actually. Oh. Maybe, like, ran into, like, a post once, like, backed into... I backed into the post at Carol's place, I think. <laughs> Late one night. May have been one of the... 48s or something. And I put a little bit too much on it, but oh well. Great. So blue, I guess, is going to be the ground to the speaker, and yellow is going to be hot. Um, I think that's all I need to connect from my volume control circuit. So now the weird part, or the awkward part, is that these are going to go back in. It's a freaking mess. It's a crazy mess. I don't know how I'm going to fit anything else in here. Just going to shove these back in. These go back in. Also sort of keep this open just to see how much slack I need. So that's going to go there, and I want enough to sort of have this, be able to have this open and work on stuff. Something is stuck. Oh, it's the only joints. This might be a little bit excessive, so I may trim these down. Although, I don't know. It'd be kind of a pain in the ass to trim down again and um, retin. More tinning? More tinning. Okay. Yeah, I kind of want to cut them down and tin them a little. Let's just do it. Let's get it over with. Just lop it a little bit. Like uh, that much. It's gone. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Stripper. Strip it down. Strip it down. Yo, this new place, they, they have a fridge that they keep stock full of Costco food. So what does that mean? That was a big factor for me, dude. Like when I was visiting my cousin at Google, like they just got free food. That's just for the workers and their families. Like oh, it's so just you can just like help yourself to whatever. Sort I of mean, this sort. is this is like a mini version of that, you know. And I was just like, well, obviously, like tech is like that, you know. And biotech is not exactly tech, but. To me, that shit was like the holy grail, man. Even if it's just sandwich meats. <laughs> I know someone that works there now, and he was like, yeah, it's just like, you know, you can make a sandwich and stuff. And I was just like, dude, 
Because that's not just it's not just the food, that's also this like the shopping time saved. So are you gonna like make yourself dinner as well? <laughs> I was thinking like if it's chill, you know, if like if nobody notices, then hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But even if it's just for lunch, like, dude, that is half the meal prep. How dope is that? I can even like doing your meal prep, though. No, like, I, it's, a, it's just a necessity. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I kind of uh, don't remember which side is negative and which is positive, but I think it's left negative and right positive. Hopefully I don't screw up. Looks like we kind of got enough solder on this thing. So I'm just gonna, I think, okay, let's close this. Just gonna try to heat it up and then um, just kind of plop the wire on. This has worked for me in the past. It's, it's a big blob, so I don't want to add to it. Ah, shit. But yeah, man, I'd do a lot for free food. Food is good. <laughs> food is very good. Did I tell you I became infamous at my current company for uh, pizza? For what? <laughs> so, like, we had this little, like, you know, free pizza thing. Where they, they got these like trucks where they make little pizzas and then you just, for however many hours, you could just keep on getting pizzas. And they had that for our company for like two days. And then on the second one, like no one was there. Like, I guess they rescheduled it and didn't tell anyone. So like that day I had like not eating breakfast, I had not brought a lunch, and I was like, I'm gonna fill up on pizza. And like, no one was there. <laughs> so then I was like, dude, wait, did, was, did I make a mistake? And then I like went back to the email, and like, um, I looked at it, and then it, it was like, uh, to, you know, it was one of those to all employees. And I was like, hmm. So then I replied, and I was like, where is our pizza <laughs> to all employees? <laughs> like, including the CEO. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, like, everywhere I go, people are like, oh, hey, I saw your email. Or, oh, you're David Ma? I saw, oh, you're, you're that pizza guy. I was pizza guy. <laughs> my, my manager was in a meeting, and someone was like, oh, well, Tell David to uh, get enough pizza. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'm at like a beach cleanup event and people are like, oh, you're David Ma. <laughs> it's freaking great. All right, so I should be done now. I just need to connect the bend, which I'll just do with some jumpers right now. Okay. Uh, I need to see where I put my cap. Is it in here? No. Huh. 
this is it. All right, so I'm checking in with the post on Reddit last time we went live. And we got a message from someone that watched for a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Barty C. Perspiration <laughs> via circuit bending. In the Reddit circuit bending chat. Uh, and he says, this looks like a cool project. If you're live streaming these and not just posting after the fact, you may find more of an audience on Twitch. Oh. There are some pretty active synth and maker communities that might be into this. Nice. Thanks. Thanks, RDC. That makes me perspire a little bit. <laughs> so let's see. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I didn't close the loop. All right. So a little tip. Sometimes, you know, these alligator clips can kind of be out of alignment. Um, so when you're clipping your leads, just make sure that you have a good contact yeah, that seems pretty good. All right. So we're live. That's uh I just heard a noise. I know that was a weird noise, huh? I don't know what that's all about. It was not a fart noise. It was not a fart noise, it was not an insect noise, it was sort of a doink. It was kind of a boy. <laughs> All right. Weird noise. Yeah, I was also doing it because like there was some weird glitch last time where like if the volume was, remember, it was like if it was all the way to the left then I would actually get a little bleed through of the original sound, but it's just not actually not doing it anymore. So, I mean that's good, I like it, it's more consistent. with that Very pleasing sound. so yeah now uh, so the volume control Very circuit works sound indeed. yeah circuit works. circuit works maybe it's time to glue the jack in I'll do that last I think because I feel like once I do that I can't do anything else because I want it to set Actually, no, that thing sets up pretty quick, doesn't it? <laughs> what do you mean sets up real quick? The, um, the crazy glue. Oh, yes. Since I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm graduating, you know, I'm graduating from, uh, from hot glue to crazy glue. Very proud of you. The issue with, like, crazy glue, though, is, like, yeah, it's going to look way cleaner, way more awesome, but... I'm not going to be able to salvage them anymore. No, you're not. <laughs> you're just going to have to accept what you're doing and move forward. I have faith in you. But I like salvaging so much. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they make these, but I, I, I had like a small comforting thought in the possibility that there are these you know, mountable 
eighth inch jacks. I don't think I've ever seen one, <laughs> so I don't think it exists, but you know, similar to like... Mountable eighth inch jacks. Okay, so similar to this pot, right? This pot has a system where there's a thread and oh, then there's, mountable. you know, the th yeah, there's a thread on the bottom and then a nut on top. I don't understand why those eighth inch jacks don't do that. It's annoying. <laughs> What do they expect you to do? Just glue them? No matter what you're doing, you just glue them? I, I think so. Because like, eighth inch is like, it's like home consumer quality. It's not like professional. It doesn't mean they shouldn't, like, if there's a market for it, they should sell it. They probably do. I don't know. I haven't looked, you know. I, I, I didn't think of that. <laughs> there probably is, because there's like a million different things out there. Okay, so what was I going to do? Yeah. Jack? I don't know, last time I was at that store, I don't remember seeing those, though. Yeah, but like Mouser or like DigiKeys, probably, they would have to have it. Oh, dude, it totally exists. Yeah? Oh. Okay, cool. So then I don't feel as bad about burning these up, because it's like, I want to switch to those. And then I can start salvaging those. That would be way better. So, oh, no, they're, they're all over the place. Yeah, that's good. So why did we buy these cheap wine ones? Because I didn't know. <laughs> we're learning. It's because we're learning. That's my excuse every time. So let's see. Now, having said that, maybe I should just wire this baby up. Or, yeah. Okay, they're basically like the same exact thing, but they have a screw on mountable. Yes. We'll have to get some of those. Hmm. How many of these other ones do we have though? Didn't we buy a bunch of them? Yeah, like 10 or 20. 20 sounds more accurate. Well, 20 probably because we split it. But, yeah, I mean, they work. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try to, I, I think I did this and it didn't really do anything. The only real reason that I'm actually going through these bends again is because, you know, when you're probing, things aren't super consistent. So the probe doesn't always make a perfect contact with your circuit uh, for a number of reasons. Like, I don't know, there's like that anodized coating on the screwdriver maybe, and you know, maybe there's some corrosion on the terminals of the circuit. I I've just noticed this before and you know, there's also these, you know, surface mount components are really tiny and sometimes it's hard to get um, just a straight on connection. And there's also the added factor of when you're holding your probes and there's added natural resistance from you, you know, because then your body's part of the circuit. So you don't fully know what's going on until you solder those leads um, and clip something on. So um, now that I've done that, I'll revisit some of these. So right now I have R2 connected to R1 and I will want to connect R3 to R2. And I think I tried this before and didn't find anything interesting, but I'll give it another go. There he goes. Giving it another go. <laughs> so, my favorite probes. Eyeglass screwdrivers. Eyeglass screwdrivers. Mm-hmm. 
it's cool. <laughs> Tried and true. Tried and true. Well, you know what? I only need I one of these. By the master guru. Original circuit bender. Oh, you make me blush, you. <laughs> oh, Gazala? Is yeah. that what he recommends? In his book, he says to you, though. <laughs> That's cool. I did read his book, actually, you know. I, you did? I did. <laughs> I, um, I pirated a PDF of it a long time ago, I realized. <laughs> Yeah. Yo, Reed, if you're watching, don't trip, though. <laughs> I'm just the worst. Your boy, Paul, your boy Paul's got you, all right? This is purchased. I have the real thing. This guy is the bad guy, but don't worry. Don't pour it. We got the, the real bad thing. Guy. It's legit. The bad guy. Happily give you money for your knowledge, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I mean, you're being honest. I appreciate your honesty. And the fact that you know it's shameful is good. Ooh, that's pretty cool. You're making that noise? Yeah, pretty sweet. Where'd that come from? That's from the combination of the two bands. No longer farting, it's making cool noises. It's like speeding up the original sounds. So is this a new bend you just found? Yeah. Someone wasn't doing it before, probably because of that thing I was talking about. Oh, so you know what else I need to do is I need to put a switch on these then. So, hmm, I guess I do need to solder another, I need to solder a lead onto this R3 so I can play with it. I think first things first, and then we'll see what kind of components we can put in there. Um, if there's a lot of crazy combinations, I can revisit this thing that I did before, which is uh, like a matrix. So if there are a lot of interesting combinations of different connections to be made, then I can sort of connect them to jacks and then arrange them in a matrix. So, you know, you can sort of build different, I don't know, patches off of that. So I remember, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but I tried this before and there is some notable footage that actually plays. For what? in um, the Bend It movie. Oh, we made a movie? We made a movie. We did make a movie, that's right. Yeah, it's right. called the Bend It movie. You can check it out at benditmovie.com. So uh, just a little tidbit, what I just talked about, the patch bay, I actually attempted with a different toy, sort of like an animal sound piano. And the thing was pretty cool. It had like maybe three different animal sounds you could, you know, select and play on a little keyboard deal. And I was animal soldering this. Selector. Yeah, I was soldering the dealie. I don't remember what happened. It failed at some point. Maybe I dripped some hot solder onto it, or I don't. I don't know what I did, but it hot failed. <laughs> And there is a funny clip of me yelling and being very frustrated and ripping the wires out of the whole dealy and saying, why don't you put that in your documentary, huh, Paul? I thought you were doing that just to show off. Something actually upset you? <laughs> just to show off? Like I was like, oh, like I was like, you know, salvaging in a cool way? No, not at all. That was like a burn moment, a moment of shame. Acting? <laughs> no acting. That was uh, it's true. a sweaty, it's true. frustrated it's man. <laughs> sweaty, frustrated, shirtless man. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that was funny. It made for a solid moment, for sure. And I, I, like, I like that diva comment, too. Why don't you put that in your documentary? Because, like, I didn't even, like... <laughs> I, I thought you were just making a kind suggestion. <laughs> Like, I was taking it out on the documentary, you know? <laughs> you can't hurt the documentary. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> the documentary hurts itself. <laughs> it stands for itself. I think I've submitted it to a good amount of festivals at this point. Waiting to hear back. I think our first batch of... Uh, yes or no's comes in on November 1st, so stay tuned. November 1st? Yep, next week. Exciting. Next week or so. Exciting. So we'll get a big batch of no's on November 1st. But, but, uh, but, uh. Ah. I mean, a big batch <laughs> of yeses. We'll have laurels to show off. Laurels Thank you. for everyone. Yes. That's what I thought I heard. <laughs> oh. I gotta look at how many how many I've actually submitted to. Let's look it up. Uh oh. Yeah, that thing <laughs> It did the thing. It did the thing. It only does it while I'm on that camera too. <laughs> All right. I can continue talking to table cam. So what I just did was grab my little bag of salvage wires and I am embracing the rainbow. I'm going to use a different color for this connection. Um, I don't have a lot to choose from. Basically, the only color is purple or like a different shade of yellow. Yeah, so I went with purple. So purple is going to go out from R3 and then I'll figure out, um, it'll help me think about how I want to make these connections and how to access them on the front panel. It's only, hmm, yeah. I guess if, there's, if there are enough possibilities, then I will wire up a patch bay. That's always exciting. And hopefully I won't rip it out in frustration this time. <laughs> you never know. I mean, I'm hoping you do. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just want some good video. Why don't you use video. that for your live broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as funny the second time around. Like, it was just, it was like genuine. Like, <laughs> your documentary is irritating me because I suck. <laughs> Emotions. <clears throat> this is exciting. Um, I'm hoping that I could put a little pot onto this new bend because it's, it's speeding up the original sounds. So if I could put a pot on it, then I could play with that pitch, theoretically. Ah, that would be so cool. Oh, shit. So... So... I'm looking at the list of stuff we submitted to. Ten. Ten festivals were submitted to at this point. One up in San Francisco. Another hole in your head film festival. <laughs> Where's that one? San Francisco. Oh, okay. So we hear back on that November 1st. Uh, the San Diego Underground Film Festival. Were you part of that before? No, I've gone to it, but I've never actually been in. This was probably the most expensive one of all of them I submitted to. Undecided. Notification date, November 1st for that one. That'd be cool to get into that one, San Diego. Undecided, also in San Diego? That's, well, yeah, it's the same one. The status is undecided. So they haven't decided whether they're going to play it or not. Oh. 
So the San Diego one was the most expensive to get into? San Diego Underground, yeah. yeah those fuckers. Yeah, it's like 70 bucks. What? <laughs> it's, it's not a cheap, it's not Fucking a poor man's San Diego, game. man. But hey, rolling the dice. It's throwing money away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Good thing you're making more money, dude. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be able to afford it if I wasn't, so. worth it to me. And what the heck, if nothing else, we're supporting the arts in San Diego, you know? That's how we gotta do it. Oh, shit, that's too much. Too many people pirating books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, shit. There's the Magnolia Independent Film Festival. We'll hear back from... I should just stop hosting. December 15th. Every time I host something, I self-incriminate. Whatever, man. Remember that first episode when I said I lied to the FDA? And then said it was a joke? Well, that was months ago and no one's arrested you yet, so I think we're fine. <laughs> it's the Hollywood Screening Film Festival. You're back. Hollywood, Florida, right? Huh? Hollywood, Florida? Nope. That's Los Angeles. Uh, the Atlanta DocuFest. That one sounds cool. Yeah. I want to go to Atlanta. Right? Hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. Atlanta. Go banana and hot Atlanta. Oh, shit. I don't want to do that. Uh, American Reality and DocFest, Los Angeles. Fuck, the I'm having a hard time. Experimental Forum, Los Angeles. Los Angeles Underground Film Festival. Push this out the way. San Francisco Frozen Film Festival. Frozen? Uh, notification date June 14th, 2022. That's way in the future. <laughs> it's way in the future. And the Los Angeles Liftoff. Oh, lift off. And we have lift off. <laughs> what is up with these names? Uh, I, don't, I don't pay much. I don't judge the festival based on its name because if I did, I probably wouldn't submit the shoot. Uh, uh, I read the description, and if it sounds like you know they focus on independent like artists like us that are doing different kind of stuff, then I definitely are will I'm willing to pay the money. Yeah. For that. Like, prestige has nothing to do with anything that I'm submitting to. Like, no Sundance. We're not going to try South by Southwest. We're not going to try <laughs> anything uh -huh. prestigious. I think the only one that I was considering was Slam Dance, but I didn't want to pay like $110 for an entry fee, so I passed. Another funny name Slam Dance? Yeah. Slam Dance is like the answer to Sundance. They screen at oh. like the same exact week in the same city. So Sundance is like the mainstream kind of thing, and Slam Dance is like, we're going to play stuff that isn't that way, and we're going to support independent artists, and even though Sundance mm. claims to be that. Oh, that's a whole thing. It's so like yeah. Fuck Yeah Fest. Hmm? Fuck Yeah Fest. Fuck Yeah Fest. And so yeah, the Liftoff Film Festival in Los Angeles, they give like a hand up to people that are like us, trying to weasel our way into the industry. By making films on our own. <laughs> weasel. The weasel. But we won't hear back from them until September 5th, 2022. Damn. How come they take so long to evaluate these shits? Some of them just are that way. So, over the next year, We'll be uh, trickling in some laurels. <laughs> and then after that, we'll try and sell this baby. Nice. In the meantime, you can go to BendedMovie.com where it's streaming live if you want to watch it now. Yeah, so my Meltdown, if you want to watch my Meltdown. Some major distribution company gets their sticky fingers on <laughs> You can go ahead and go to BendedMovie.com. 
And that will take you to a link to where you can pay $2.99 to stream the movie. Watch it, enjoy it, about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, pretty much skips through this long, tedious process of bending, so you don't have to kind of sit here with all the soldering thing. It just shows the highlights. Insight and intuition and beautiful thoughts. And frustrations, and, and frustrations of failure. <laughs> uh, don't forget that. And frustrations of failure. Giving to you all packaged, even like live performance with bending and a song created on a cell phone by this guy. This guy. Using bending, bending sounds. All packaged into this neat little thing that you can sit down and enjoy. In the comfort of your own home. <laughs> Bandit movie. The comfort. Dot com. Your house is oh, we're making noise. Okay, that's not the right one. So that does nothing. I kind of liked how it was like, ew. Kind of. Yeah, weird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that speeds it up. Okay, so what happens if I put a little pot in there? Is it gonna, is it gonna make it interesting? I'm gonna use 10K before, I think. 500k. I need the box, Paul. You know where the box is. Get more knobs on this fart machine. Get all the knobs. Get all the knobs. Knobby ass farts. <laughs> you see that? Show off, show off the arsenal. It does look pretty awesome. I, I don't have that. Look at that. So you've got the knob covers for after you picked out um, one of these three values of potentiometers. You got these eighth inch jacks, which we're going to get rid of and buy the cool mountable kind. And then, you know, Paul has a little flare. We're picking out cool little doodads like this baby. So push button switch. I see neat stuff in These look like some uh, trim potentiometers. So these are kind of like when you want to set, this gives you a range of values, but you use a tiny little screwdriver to. Uh, set what value you want by turning this screw. Let's see what else we got. Some big fancy switches. On, on, off, off. That's pretty cool. Because you never know. So those are cool. I, mean, I love these like paddle switches right here. Haven't used these yet. Got a real nice feel. Got some fancy Quarter inch jacks. Jack. It's got four lugs, so TRS and maybe a switch. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, here's a salvage yeah. job. Yeah. Well, salvage one. Well, I think I saw it and I didn't switch. like it. Switched it out. Because, you know, it still works. So that is. Uh, the patio, and uh, the basement over here, we have a good array of electrolytic capacitors, and then uh, some, what are these called, ceramic, no, tantalum capacitors. We've got some resistors, a good selection here, LEDs, for in indicating, resist and indicate. We've got clear and red. White. Oh, that's cool. So, nice to be organized. All right. Something uh something out of whack here. Yeah, I messed something up. Okay. 
this thing. That's what it was. This divider got out of whack. No, we got it. We got it. We got it. I'm just going to move these pots now. I know what I'm doing here. There. Alright. So I'm going to grab 100k. That's kind of big. What did I use? 10k. Let's see how 10k works. Is this 10? Oh no, this is 1. It's education time. I'm going to do potentiometer. Potentiometer. A three terminal resistor with a sliding or rotating contact that forms an adjustable voltage divider. Potentiometers are commonly used to control electrical devices such as volume controls on audio equipment. So that's the thing that we're going to connect right now. So if this effect is based on resistance, then we can vary the resistance with this potentiometer. And we want to do that because um, it is another expressive knob that we could use. I could do this with the farts. If there's a way to do that, that would be awesome. Okay, so yes, that effect is tied to resistance, and we can vary it within this range. So the next thing to try, this thing is really loud, and dirty, huh? It's really, why is it? Is that the speakers, or is that this jack, I wonder? Uh, no, actually, when I plug it into my phone, it'll do that. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of it's dirty. noise. Oh, it's not as bad when it's not going, huh? Could be your ground too, right? Well, the grounds are soldered pretty well. Yeah, but I didn't think you had the ground going to anything yet. Where am I wrong? No, I connected that. Otherwise. Yeah, that would be closed. Hold up. Hold up. What's going on here? You know what? The other lead fell off, so the fart is not engaged right now. Uh, and yes. The fart. And the noise was from it being disengaged. <laughs> Look at that. So, uh, so your, your comment was actually contributing. again. Maybe 
Can you show that to the camera? Can, uh, that's all the way over here. There it is. So the pot. So that's what it does here. So then if I don't have this connected, hmm. So it can change the pitch of what's already of the original sound. Oh wait. Okay. So I want to disconnect the the wet fart. And so now, so I can change the pitch of the original sound, but when the fart is connected, I don't think it changes the pitch of the fart. Actually, when it's connected, it does make the pitch faster, but I can't modulate it. Um, now I'm going to see what happens if I put a pot on the wet fart bend. Oh, this thing's all banged up. It's in actually. <laughs> well, I think these lugs because they're hard to grab onto. Oh, I need more jumpers. Okay, no, this thing doesn't, this thing is not tight, so, oopsie, no, this is not really, this is not making a great connection here. I think that'll work. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Very weird. Kind of weird because the two knobs are sent kind of doing the same thing. So that's still changing the pitch of the original sound. All the way to the left. This will play the original sound. If I turn it right, huh. very weird. You turn this left. So if I turn this all the way right, I get the original sound sped up.
Then with this all the way to the left, I get the sped up original sound. So I feel like if I change the range of this, so basically when this is all the way to the right, I'm getting the sped up wet fart. And then there's part of the range where it does pitch up, but then if I go all the way to the left, then I'm just getting the original. So kind of want to try a different value. Like if I could just get that bit, but that's like a third or a quarter of a turn. So if I could get that range expressed within the whole knob turn, that would be best. So let's see, this is 1K. I think maybe if I increase, um, I'll get a better expression out of that. Let's try 10. Hope this works. So where were you at before? What are you doing now? That was a 1K pot. And now you're doing 10? Yeah, because, well, so I was able to sort of modulate that fart sound, but only within about a quarter turn of the knob. And so I'm hoping to sort of get that range within the whole turn, you know, all 360 because um, it's not, it's a very narrow range to just have like, you know, a quarter of it. Um, basically, I was able to just turn it a tiny bit and I want to be able to turn it like the whole way around. Like I was doing this, maybe this, and that was the range of the sweep. I want to be able to get the sweep like on the full range of the pot because yeah, it would so be much more expressive. More yeah, the resolution of that. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know if that if that's even better. It's interesting. It's like you get to a certain point and it just goes to the original and it starts pitching it. <laughs> well, let's keep on going up. Switch it up. I think I have a big one here. 500K. Actually becoming smaller. Huh. Fancy that. She need to go the other way. I don't know if we have any like small ones. Like a 500. I don't recall buying anything that small. Whoa. This one. 500 ohms. Hopefully they're not touching and shorting.
It only affects this one sound. It doesn't do anything for the other ones. Oh, this. It does kind of for that one. It, only, it does that when you sweep the full range, which is kind of interesting. But it doesn't do anything if it's anything less than that. It's pretty weird. You're weird. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why we're doing this. It's 8.53 p.m. Pacific time. We're here in San Diego, California. And we are circuit bending live on YouTube. Mr. David Caballo is currently circuit bending a children's book toy. Uh, it's meant to noises in a children's book. <laughs> but instead, it's making fart noises. Kinda. <coughs> I guess I've had to guess the right value would be in between 500 and 1K. Um, so I know you can add a resistor in between these two terminals. Basically, like, so you look at the pot, there's three leads. The outside um, are the ends of that strip, that resistive strip inside the pot. And then the middle is kind of like the pointer that is splitting, you know, the voltage. So you can wire an additional resistor in between um, the two ends of the strip to basically increase the resistance. So I think if I do that, I could probably get the perfect range in between the 500 and the 1K. Narrowing it down. Yeah. I 
I never played around with the range of this. So maybe we should go ahead and do that. Well, this is 100K. Um, let's see what 10K does. that decreased the range. Uh oh, what was that? Strange beepings. Camera 2 decides to take a nap. Yep, camera 2 is taking a nap. Fuck you, camera 2. Right? Never use sleeping on the job. Yeah, I don't like you. Of course, the only day you're not using the vice. <laughs> I have a vice. I don't use the vice all the time. I know, but you've been using it. You were using it a lot when you were altering the case, and <laughs> that is not the case today. Oh! <laughs> You know, I'm guessing this one has to be tuned as well. I think I get a better range with this one, the 500k. So then that begs the question, if I have a 1 mega ohm, is that going to give me even better range? Well, let's find out, man. <laughs> I don't know if I have one. Man! <laughs> oh, this would have been a good time for vice <laughs> It wasn't napping on the job. Uh, it's one of the new GoPros that I bought. I mean, it's new? No, well, it's not. Definitely not new. Oh, okay. I was like, damn, you, you're really making some money now. No, nah, it's used. It's new to us. Okay. And it's finicky this far in this podcast. Dude. He thinks it overheats. I don't have a right to be finicky yet. Bag of random parts. What value are these guys? I like how this says zero ohm. It's a ghost resistor. 5K. Hmm. Let's see how this works on this guy right here. Uh-oh. These shits are always getting disconnected. Welcome to Bend It Live. You are watching a man slowly lose his mind. <laughs> I already lost mine. Oh, fancy that. Fancy that. Where is the second brown wire? Oh, brownie. 
Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. And then, uh-oh. No, that wasn't it. 500K is the best. I'm missing something here. Okay, now we're good. Oh. Is there a smaller one? I wonder if you can get a smaller resistor. Or I guess you could go in parallel. <laughs> I like that. I like the sound of that. It's difficult because this, okay, so 100K gives a better range, but I don't know, neither of these like sweeps, they, they don't sweep very well. Wasn't there one that swept you? Not really. Oh, 
This knob's too too tall to play with. <laughs> that one's not bad. Boop boo. That's not bad. Vice cam. Let's see how this goes. Should write some notes down. So have them finalized. See, like I got this rain. Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. But not a lot of sweepable range. Basically, do I want the sweep or the range? Unless I wire them both in series, there's an idea, right? I just have two pots, like I have a, I have a coarse and a fine. That would be kind of cool. I've never done this before. Let's see if it works. Nope. Doesn't work that way. I tried to wire up two pots. So yeah, I kind of got to decide on uh, a pot and then if I want to change the range then I can wire up another additional resistor. So that one has the better range. I'll probably wire this one up. If that was 100k, this is 1k. That one basically does nothing. Too small. 10k. Oh, that's 100. Oops. 500. Here's 10K. If 
feel like that one has a, this one has a better range, the other, or this one has better sweepable range. The other one has a wider range, and I feel like this one probably is more expressive. So it's kind of a hard decision right now, which one to hardwire. Guess it's a good problem to have, right? <laughs> yeah, too many options. sounds like exactly one half step, which is nice. So this is when the other bend is disconnected, and now this 10K isn't sounding like enough. Decisions, decisions. Put on 100k. Maybe that's the best of best, best of both worlds. connect the other bend. It's going to pitch it up a little bit, I think. Or down, rather. Huh. Yeah, so interesting. So it sounds like I can turn, I'll put a switch on the other bend to go on and off. Sounds like I get a higher range here, higher pitch range here when it's the other bend is disconnected, and then when it's connected, I get like this lower register. So now disconnected, and then they both end at the same top. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, whoa, interesting. It's pretty weird, huh? Kind of changes the tone. You hear that? This one, it's like much more, it's like harder. Weird.
like this band more. <laughs> Door, door. I should connect this one backwards then. So I'll just switch the orientation here, the outside lug if you um, depending on which one you connect it to, you can switch it around and it will reverse the polarity. So let's see, this way the low sounds are up, up top. So I'm all the way to the left. That's not a good connection, it's tripping out. That's why it came disconnected. See, this is why those wires keep on coming off, because I keep on straining them. Right. Something's really messed up now. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I hope I didn't cause a short somewhere. Oh yeah, should probably build that in. So I need to put the batteries out. Reset. Nope. Something's not going well here. Something touching? No, not that I can see. <laughs> oh shit, is that it? Oh, something was touching. It was the two leads of my bend. So we're back. <laughs> yeah. So I can get the high range over there. And then, as I turn this down to the low range, then I can go into smart territory. And then, yeah, if I disconnect this, I have an even higher range. And I connect this. I have a lower range for the original sound, and then if I turn this on, I got the fart. So I like that. I think this is basically how I'm going to wire these up. 
I'll write some notes now. Um, the only thing I'll want to do is make some minor adjustments here. I may want to add a resistor just to change the range here to see if I can tweak it a little bit. It's uh, kind of an if because I don't know if I have the right value resistor. Um, I'll just you know see what I have and see if it works out or not. Then the other thing I do want to do is wire up this jack. But first, let's take notes on these uh, pots. And it's note taking time. That's For right. You who have let's see. Just tuned in or are clicking around on the timeline after we were live, or those of you who are watching that didn't watch the beginning and are watching right now. Five hundred. Mr. Caballo is bending a children's book tab. Makes noises while kids are reading books. And he has Went found all sorts of bends on these things. It's a capacitor. He started by uh, opening it up, probing some parts, finding some bends that he found interesting, uh, created some fart noises, and that's where we thought it was going to cap off. But no, oh no. Now that he's added some potentiometers in the mix, uh, he is now manipulating the fart noises and making other noises as well. So. This is turning into quite the thing. Not only has he done these bends, but he's also added a jack uh, and a volume control. And also put it inside of its own individual clear case. So it's been quite the journey for this circuit bent children's book noise maker. This is the sixth week that we have gone live here on Bend It Live, every other Monday night, 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., or <laughs> whenever we feel like finishing. But we usually do a couple hours of bending every other week. A continuous stream of consciousness for David and his journey, bending this one item. Currently found the combination of resistors and variable resistors that he likes, that create the sounds that he wants, and he's making note of them so that in case anything goes wonky, he can always go back to what's on the paper. I'm referencing between my original diagram uh, because I have pots for both of these bends. And so I'm just sort of going into greater detail. So they both share R2, and then wet fart goes out to R1. Hold that fart goes out to R3. So then here I just have the connections in detail. So R2 is shared by both. Let's see. Oh, whoops. Yeah, OK, I'm right. Oh wait, no. Hold that far goes to R3. Wet far goes to R1. So I'm going to have the connections for my 100K on hold that fart and 500 ohms for wet fart. These two I'll consider bridging with some kind of resistor here um, to see if I can get a better, more expressive range. And, uh, okay, so that's what I'll do next time. And right now, I'm going to sort of disconnect all this stuff, put away what I need, and I think it's time to super glue my jack. So I guess I'll have to disconnect it. Super glue the jack. Yeah, we are graduating to super glue. No more hot glue. It's not aesthetic. So I kind of want to make a note 
Is there any like masking tape here? Yeah, blue on the wall. Blue? Yeah, that stuff. Something not as permanent. I just, uh, I have two brown wires for my bend and I want, I just want to label one of them because they both go to different places. So I'll label the one that the two bends have in common, which is R2. Right now, I'll just put a uh, piece of blue tape on that. I can take this out later. This will just make things easier for making these connections with the jumpers and stuff. Um, I know there's some kind of marker here. This is good enough. Fuck, it's R2. Come on, man. Get together. All right, it says R2 now. Kind of. Can't really see it. I can't even see it, but whatever. It's the one with the blue. Maybe I'll write that in my diagram, too. <laughs> the R2 has the blue thing on it. R2, blue tape. Why does it make sense? Yeah, I just want to make things easier. Because um, I just remember last time I just kind of disconnected everything and forgot about it. Right. <laughs> I was like, I'm done thinking about this. I feel bad, I guess. I mean, it wasn't too bad because I kind of knew what I was doing. But if I didn't, it would have been terrible. So just move all this out of the way. So then I want these two, I'll keep for later. I don't know which ones are mine. I think I have two of these. Make sure I keep track of the components that I'm gonna reuse and then just don't toss them aside. Keep this in here. Oh, forgot I need to put a switch on. So I may as well start looking for a switch that I want to put on and then of course I'm going to have to mount it so you know we will get a chance to use vice cam probably next time. Vice cam. That's right. So let's see. I already forgot what I did. Fuck. There was a area where I disconnect. Basically if I disconnect wet fart to so put a switch here. Usually the switch symbol is like an open sort of door like that. I don't have any room to put it here. So maybe I'll just kind of make this an inset switch. So I'll say switch there because um, when I was playing with these bends earlier, if I disconnected this wet fart bend, the other bend um, sort of made the original sound have a either lower or higher register. I can't remember which one. I think when it was engaged, it was lower. So I'll need to think about what kind of switch, you know, maybe a cool toggle switch or just a salvage, like plastic one. Oh, 
Apple then I should Switch. think about whether or not I want to switch for the other one. And I don't think it really made a difference. We'll think about that next time. But for now, I think I want to wire up my jack. Use the glue. The glue. Use the glue, man. So I'm deciding which way to put it since I'm going to super glue it in. I think I'm going to face the leads outside. So if I need to repair them, I can reach them. Glue. 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 All right. We doing it. Yeah. Make this shit permanent. I'm gonna use up these jacks and then get the cool kind. Get back in there. I only want one. All right. And then I'll just have to hold it in there. Uh, I guess I'll just have to hold it until it sets. That's fine. Yep. Because otherwise I can't really close this. If I close it, it's just going to fall out. Usually poke it with something else. I think no work good. This thing sucks. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> what did like, There's like some kid there. poke his eye out with this thing yeah, when they got rid of it? Yeah. yeah, it's all fun and games until someone pokes their eye out and then glues it shut. <laughs> and then glues it shut. Glues the cavity shut. I mean, no one wants to see it anyway, so. <laughs> All right, just put a little bit of, oh shit, that was a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> Go, 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 man. Oh, man. Just hold it, man. Just hold it. There is definitely some excess, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> Just hold it. Just, Just hold it right there. I see some on your finger, too. <laughs> yeah. I'll just wait for that stuff to dry. When that's dry, uh, the jack's dry. When you can't move your finger, you know it's dry. It's hardening. It's getting there. Oh, oh. shit. No, I fucking let go. <laughs> this is not good. Patience, man. Remember, this is not hot glue. Come on. Hopefully this isn't the one type of plastic that I can't bond to. Wouldn't that suck? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't do shit. Really? Didn't stick. No. Super glue. Super glue did not work. Super glue did not work. I mean, my finger is stuck on it, but uh, it's not stuck to this box. No, it's still liquid and shit. All I did was super glue my fingers. <laughs> okay. That sucks. Epoxy. Although maybe now, you know, what if now there's like a layer of super glue and then it could bond to itself, right? I just primed it. Worth a try. Just 
definitely worth a try. It's like super glue crust on this thing now. All right. Take two. Oh, fuck. I'm going to be losing a lot of skin tonight. You're gaining skin. <laughs> You're right. I should take up sewing. I'll be really good at it now. You have no fingerprints tonight. I could do all kinds of stuff. I don't think it's working. So you're saying there's a certain kind of plastic that super glue does not stick to? Yeah. And you happen to have a case that's made out of that plastic? Is that what you're saying? It seems like it. This shit ain't doing shit. I don't think I've ever encountered that plastic before. I mean, you could see it. it's still liquid. Fucking waste of time. See, that's all I'm doing is just getting extra skin. <laughs> Shiny new skin. All right. This is not a skin picking kind of podcast yet. <laughs> five minute? No, we need 90 seconds. I didn't put this five minute shit up front. The, get that in the back. I did not put any thought into the order. <laughs> uh, so really, I should kind of do a blob on this and then pat it on, right? Yeah, you gotta mix the two together first. Let yeah. me just do it like uh, look for something to ruin. In this package, or in the tray. And then let's see, dab it with uh, boopity boppity. Cool. Just picking my strange new skin. All I did was leave my skin on the side of that case. <laughs> Boopity boppity. Boopity boppity. Just a tiny bit. Don't need too much. Oh, damn, this stinks. Oh, fuck you, Jack. Sick of your shit. That's how you know it's working. Stinks. You mix the beauty guys? God, fucking stinks, dude. Yeah, you're next. You mix them? Yeah. Ninety seconds, right? Ninety seconds. That's <laughs> fifteen. I thought I unplugged the fart machine. Fifty two seconds remaining. Thirty-nine. Twenty-eight. 
create. Eighteen. I scan. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Looks pretty good. There's just one part of it that maybe didn't get a coat, but hopefully it's strong enough. It's a little piece of my skin on the side now. Memento. It's your donation. <laughs> the donation to the project. Blood, sweat, and skin. I don't think that looks pretty cool, though. Circuit bent skin flute. What? What? Skin flute? So good then, skin flute. <laughs> Gross, dude. So good bent. Farming skin flute. Circuit bent vibrator. Alright. Eh? Eh? Yeah. Jack. A little crusty, but that's okay. That's just the bonding. All right, a little see-through prison aesthetic. Okay, not too many wires out. And she farts. Look at all this glue right here. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That is glue and skin. It's a real memento. I don't have to use hot glue to be sentimental. It's all right here. It's all here. Let's see if it fully set. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Fucking epoxy. So maybe just, uh, I don't want to wire up that bend again, but maybe just try, try out the jack a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Feels good. Feels pretty good. I'd say that was worth the finger skin. Always. <laughs> Oh, just grab the glue side of the pencil. More skin. <laughs> Great. Is that it? What time is it, Paul? It's 9.45 p.m. Pacific time. All right. Feel free to uh, bend as long as you want tonight, as I am picking up some people from the airport around midnight. <laughs> Late night for you, huh? Late night for me. Going to work early still? Look at you, man. I'm actually going to wake up and work out before I go to work. What? Don't you go to work at like 5? I work out at 5. You work out at 5? You know, uh, one of my roommates is a personal trainer, and he said that's, that's how you got to do it. That is how you have to do it. It's true. If you are a working professional full-time in the big city, and you want to get your workout in, 5 a.m. I was thinking just because there are less people also, that's be kind of nice. Yeah, it's a great time to work out for sure. Yeah. I used to do like the 5 p.m. Um, I got too much going on in the evenings. Like I say, I'm going to do it at night and then get too busy and I just don't do it. Yeah. This has now become a skin picking podcast. <laughs> and exercise and skin picking. Exercise. It's because of the skin picking though. But, uh, yeah, let's just wrap up then. So today, uh, oh wait, wait, there's something I forgot. Oh wait, there's more. There is more. There's something I forgot. Like more. It's around here somewhere. So I finally ordered something cool. What did you order? For the uh, fart machine. Ooh. You'll, you'll see what they are. 
I'm gonna show them on the camera. I got this. Oh, it's a knob. It's a knob cover. Let's see if it fits. It fits. Look Chicken at that. Head. Mm. Chicken head. <laughs> I'm gonna do it the other way though. So let's maybe do it to where this is the max, like all the way up, and then this is the lowest. Dang, dude. All right? Oh, that's pretty Fresh. classy, huh? I looked at some couple different colors, but... Uh, oh, you got a screen in front of you. You can see what it's in. Can't see it. Yeah. yeah. I guess next time we're going to figure out how to cut this thing down, though. I want to cut it down so it's flush. I'm just fucking, I'm just getting glue on this thing, man. Fuck. It's <laughs> getting glue all over. Yeah, I liked yellow. I thought it, I thought it kind of fit. I'm gonna go with the toy, you know. That's dope. What'd See, you pay? What'd you pay for that knob? Uh, shit, I think it was two of them for ten bucks two or ten? something like that. Right. Okay. Cheaper than one for seven, dude. The going rate's like one for seven for like a lot of these. And there's another style that's pretty popular too. It's like, okay, it's like the TV dial. Like the old school TV dial where it's like round, but then it has like the spine in the middle. Right. That one is also kind of hot. So I got, I got some of those and they're pink. So that was going to be my other like you know, option for this. And you have two more pots for this? Yeah, I do. I have two more expression go. pots and then possibly more. Um, let's see. So, so next week, I guess I'll have to, uh, I decided on putting these pots in for expression and they're just, they're going to be pitch based for either the original sounds or the fart sounds. And I want to play around with adding resistors to them to sort of zero in on the most expressive range, if I can. Um, and then after that, I suppose I'll wire these up and mount them. And then I'll have to decide on, I guess, the location too. This, uh, Kind of wish I spaced this out better now because this case is starting to fill up. Like maybe I could put them over here. I mean, I don't think you knew you were going to have this many pots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll have to rethink this, but. Uh, it's still looking good. Well, so the other thing I was thinking about adding was um, I uh, found a chip that is uh, kind of a recorder. A sound recording circuit um, and it's kind of meant for like these I don't know if you ever had like like in the 90s there was that thing the yak back <laughs> it was like this keychain that like you just shout you you know you say stuff into and then it records like a one second clip or whatever just like toys like that or whatever and you know custom greeting cards and stuff like that's what this little chip is used for so it's a it's basically a low quality recorder Yak bag. and so I bought a bunch of these chips and so they're the chips are inside of this toy that's what you're saying I'm guessing that toy used that but you know that sort of thing and so I got a bunch of those chips um, other people have worked with them and kind of expanded on the application circuits uh, from the data sheet. And so I kind of want to integrate one into the yeah. fart machine. Probably the smartest thing to do though would actually just be to do a separate build to just make a sampler out of that chip and then connect other toys to it. Uh, so Maybe I'll do that and maybe, and I'm also running out of space here anyway, so. The other thing was like, if you do that though, you know, you're gonna need, you're still gonna need one for each toy, kind of. So you might as well just build it in. So I, I may build that into um, the fart machine, but 
I'm, I'm kind of running out of room for jacks, and if I include that, well, I guess I do still have the sides. So the jacks could be going off the sides. I don't necessarily need to have them on the front panel. It's not like I'm going to, you know, I, I really need the knobs to be on the front panel because I'm going to play with them, but the jacks I could just plug in off the sides. So I did want to use, you know, look into building this recorder circuit and I can, you know, open up, I can put a line in and other sort of things and uh, a trigger, you know, so that I could trigger the recording with something else and just kind of add more possibilities for modulation. And so um, I may may get into that next week, um, depending on, you know, I, I probably won't because I'm going to have to do a decent amount of mounting and vice work, so probably not, but that is the future direction of this project. And I do want to just start working with that chip uh, because I think that's something, a good option for just any, you know, circuit bending toy. So, that's what we got next time. I will mount, mount up these pots and get them dialed in and possibly add the recorder. Yak back. The yak back. <laughs> I don't think they, they're made anymore. We can say that. I got one up on the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, At the thanks for. of this episode, you mentioned that you might be starting on a new project. Is, is this what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, sort of what I wanted to get into. Gotcha. And it's going to be a bit more of a detailed process um, in that I will be looking at a circuit from the data, the data sheet. Um, usually these chips have a data sheet just like when I showed the switching jack. You know, it'll have a diagram. For that one, it was just a jack. So. Like most people know what to do with a jack, so there wasn't like a example application circuit, but it did have a diagram of the jack itself, right. um, of the leads, and then you could think of your own applications for that. But the it will be a different set of skills because um, I'll have to digest the diagram, the circuit diagram into. Uh, a breadboard. So that's basically a um, sort of a like a board for projects. Yeah, I have one. And all it's it's connected in rows. And so that sort of simplifies your connections, and you kind of have to translate from the circuit diagram into these rows. And in that way, you basically condense that diagram into a circuit board. And from there, that's not the most efficient form, actually. From there, if you're building a lot of those, then you may want to actually simplify those traces uh, because a whole grid of rows may not be the most efficient way. So then you can actually simplify them into those long, those crazy snake-like traces. They look that way because now the circuit diagram has been condensed into its most efficient form. And that would be a PCB, a printed circuit board. So, you know, you first do your prototyping from translating the circuit diagram onto a breadboard. And then from there, um, you can streamline it even more into a PCB. And that's something that you can buy a kit for and do etching. You know, it's kind of like glass etching or something like that. And um, you, you create these copper traces. Uh, but I don't... You can create them in a program, too, and order them. Right, right. That's, I think that's what most people do now. Right. You're talking about doing that by hand, though. Yeah, I mean, that's... It's pretty like, far up. You buy a kit for it, like at Fry's or Radio Shack or whatever. Or well, I guess it's online now. <laughs> Amazon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll I'll be translating the circuit diagram onto a breadboard, and to do that, um, 
you can use the software. So we will be getting into that at some later date, but until then, um, I will be mounting up some of these pots. I just don't know where I'm going to put them, probably along the side. I'm kind of playing with them there. And yeah, thanks for joining us today on Bend It Live. Um, a little note on sort of the format of the podcast. It is a long format po podcast. It's all in real time. Um, the idea is sort of to bring everyone just the whole journey, just any problems that might be encountered and just all the stuff I don't know. That's sort of... Just keeping it raw, man. <laughs> that's the other point of it, right, is it's, it's me. I'm not an engineer. I got to see... Yeah, I, I got a C in, in physics, the electricity and magnetism one, and that was with cheating. So <laughs> I'm like... You cheated? No. <laughs> I'm the worst person for this. But we, pre we present this in real time just so you could see all the mistakes that I make. And, you know, I definitely made some. And then all the exciting things that I discover despite my complete lack of knowledge. So thanks for joining us. Um, as we work on the fart machine and you know if you'd like a much more condensed version of this journey and if you would like to see me lose my temper and rip out the leads from a patch bay that frustrated me um, you can watch the Bend It movie at benditmovie.com rent it for $2.99 and um, check it out and if uh, you enjoy the long ramblings that uh, you see here, and long ramblings. basically what's happening here is just, just shooting straight from the hip. You know, I'm just tinkering and thinking as I work on this. Circumventing on his peers, baby. Right. And, and that's sort of why it's a slower pace is it's, not really planned out when we're just flying by the seat of our pants so if you like that sort of thing join us for our next episode two weeks from now monday 7 30 p.m pacific time i'll see you then bye <laughs>